Hello, good evening, good afternoon, good morning Earthlings on planet Earth, wherever you may be. It is Friday evening here in Spain. Um, the video tonight is really based around, I feel there is a turning of the tide, a changing of the wind regarding Meghan and Harry. Uh, quite a distinct change in the wind. Um, I've felt it for some time. I believe that there's been difficulties with them for, for a long time. And uh, I would urge everybody to go and have a look at the Duchess of Nar Sussex's channel and her videos, especially the most recent ones. She picked up on the Jack Royston article. I didn't realise I saw that this evening. Very good. She read it all out. And there were things in it that I had not noticed. Um very analytical and she too senses something's changed. Um, I have heard whispers not only on her channel but from emails that there is some serious or there may well be and this might not be true but uh, for what it's worth that MI6 and the Foreign Office have been looking into who's been funding the Sussex camp and the Sugars and really following the money. I dare say they've known all along, but something's kicking into action, I think, at the moment. The Jack Royston article did smack of desperation. The headline, Meghan's still a princess. Uh, you were all quite right in the video last night <coughs> about um, the fact that she would not be Wales because Harry is not Wales anymore. Charles is now the king. William is the Prince of Wales, Catherine is the Princess of Wales, their children are now the Waleses, so that surname, because the Windsors don't exactly have a surname, uh, there's, they've got various surnames. I remember when I was a kid, my dad saying, the royal family don't have surnames, and trying to explain it to me, and I've always found it quite confusing. Um, there are various surnames that have been referred to them. Um, so, Meghan is Princess Henry, but I don't know what the second half of the name would be. Um, according to the Jack Royston article, she's Princess Henry of Wales. I agree with all of you, that's incorrect. She is not Princess Henry of Wales, much as she'd like to be to keep the association with Diana and the princess, the title of the Princess of Wales. Um, so could, she could be Princess Henry Mountbatten Windsor, she could be Princess Henry of Sussex, dare I say, please no. Um, I think poor old Sussex, we really have taken one for the team. Enough with the Sussex. Uh, the ducal title uh, Sussex is a bit of an unlucky one actually, look it up on Wikipedia. It wasn't used for a very long time until Harry. So, look that one up. That's quite interesting, royal history. Uh, Jack Royston also um, said that, that, quite cheeky actually, and I only noticed this thanks to the Duchess of Nar Sussex, he said Catherine is referring to herself as the Princess of Wales ever since she received the title, the Princess of Wales. Well, I refer to myself as Fiona, because that's my name. Catherine refers to herself, refers... What an inappropriate use of words. Catherine is the Princess of Wales. Anyway, um, and, and there are other things that the Duchess of Nile Sussex pointed out. It's a very interesting video, actually. Go and have a look at that. Um, and what else is there? Omid. Omid Scobie. I had a quick look at his Twitter feed this evening. And he's, uh, firstly, I saw a very weird tweet where he had said, can you imagine if there was a Twitter glitch and all our DMs were suddenly made public? And I thought, that's, is he joking or is he weird? Interesting enough, one of the first people to respond to that tweet was Ellie Hall, who said something like, and I don't want to misquote her, you can all go and have a look for yourself on Omid's Twitter feed, she said something like, oh God, no, dun, 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 what if they look at the private DMs? They'll find out something. Well, I don't know, it's my speculation. Um, perhaps they've got wind of the MI6 rumours as well. Well, <laughs> Twitter.
Chris, I don't need to make things public for MI6. Trust me. Trust me, guys. Uh, they have access. They're the government. They issue the licenses. It's His Majesty's government. So, top of the government. I mean, I know he's not a benevolent despot, and neither was Queen Elizabeth II, but we have a crown in all the courts. Uh, the courts and the justice system are one arm of the crown. You know, we have many arms of the crown. And at the top, we got the monarch, who probably has access to all that data. So how the sugars are funded, yeah, I sense a pretty vicious war coming at the moment. Um, and Char King Charles is no shrinking violet. Anyone who can cast their mind back to the day, days of the wars of the Waleses between Diana and Charles, she was no shrinking violet, but Charles was not a pushover. Um, so <laughs> that's something to think about. Um, Ellie Hall responding, and then Omid uh, did another tweet where he was highlighting an article. Now, I don't know, I can't remember. <laughs> I can't remember if Omid wrote this article on Yahoo or if he was just highlighting it. Uh, forgive me, Omid. <laughs> um, but it it's bigging up Princess Eugenie and Beatrice. Well, this is a real change of tack in the sales, Omid. And he was saying, what a wasted opportunity for King Charles if he doesn't get the girls to do more royal appointments. He shouldn't be shrinking the royal family. Um, perhaps shockwaves went through the Sussex camp with our monarch asking Parliament to add two councillors of state and stating pretty bloody obvious reasons, which everybody's glaringly seen for a long time, that Andrew, of course, is not working royal for various reasons and that Harry doesn't even live in the country. So when the monarch is unavailable, might be ill on overseas, that they need other people to act for them and, of course, Princess Anne and Edward, Prince Edward, have been put forward and it's going through it. Nate, uh, neck break speed. And I think that was in uh, the Yahoo Omid's article that they used that term. <laughs> so I think they're a bit worried. Plus, of course, the added element that Elon Musk has bought Twitter. Now, I'm going to write to Buckingham Palace, Clarence House and Kensington Palace to ask if the monarchy, and I know the answer to the question already, but I'm going to write these letters to ask if this monarchy approves of censorship of us peasants. For example, Trevor Cool was demonetized, as we all know, and he said he received a message from YouTube that it was because he had been picking on a protected couple. I think we can all guess who that couple is or jump to our own conclusions because I don't recall Trevor really critiquing any particular couple other than Harry and Meghan. Um, so I'd like to draw that to the attention of all of those palaces. And thank you very much for all the emails and the lady today who emailed me to suggest that we could all write en masse to the three palaces to highlight the bullying that YouTubers and other people on social media have suffered at the hands of Sugar's supporters and is there any connection? There's nothing wrong with asking questions, guys. A question is not a defamatory statement. You're asking a question. And I'd like to particularly ask, um, do they approve? Because I don't believe that the Windsors would approve of any type of censorship. They don't like criticism, but they accept it. In fact, their criticism is actually their ear to the ground so they can find out what we're all really thinking and believing. Whereas some people prefer to live in a deluded Disneyland and make up their own version of reality. Um, more importantly, by writing to Kensington, Clarence House and Buckingham Palace, I'd like to draw it to the attention of the people who work there, the staff, the private secretaries, because there have been allegations of bullying by Meghan and Harry, by Valentine Lowe, who says he's spoken to the victims of bullying, and perhaps it will strike a chord. Perhaps there will be a chord of familiarity. Perhaps this could be the beginning of the end of a very dictatorial, in my opinion, Rain.
Um, thoughts, opinions, left, right and centre. Really appreciate it. All your feedback. By the way, the video I did on Harry visiting Pearl Harbour the other day, I wasn't criticising Harry, actually. I thought it was very nice, low-key. He's getting back to his old self. That's another indication that the wind has changed. Things have changed. Uh, what I was criticising was that puff piece that also oddly claimed that Prince Harry is 41 years old, when we all know he's 38. I didn't pick up on that at the time because I was so incensed that they've been so rude as to leave the specific date of Pearl Harbor out of the article and they'd really like dissed it like oh well that's just a side thing that stupid Pearl Harbor thing um so thoughts opinions I I personally think I know I am aware Lady C did a video uh, I think about a week ago about the separate she'd received information from two reliable sources that they are in the process of separation and she did also add that that information may well be true or it may be misinformation, false flag information that has been issued by Meghan in order to cause mischief. So Lady C dealt with all of that very well. I am inclined, again in my opinion, to believe that it is true. I believe that the real separation and breakup began after the booze at the Jubilee. I think that shocked the knickers off Harry. I think he thought, because Another thing, I can't remember where I read it now, and it was in the last 24 hours. <laughs> That's quite bad to have a bad memory. But somebody wrote an article and said that Prince Harry inherited not only millions from Princess Diana, but he inherited a legacy of good will. And I think he believed that us peasants would cheer him to death to the day he died. He could shit all over us. He could do what he liked. It would never matter. And I think that that St Paul's Cathedral, the booing, that was a slap in the face. I think that was his wake-up call. Oh my God, what have I done? How come I'm being booed? I'm Princess Diana's son. I thought I'd be popular forever. What's gone wrong? And I think that may have caused some self-reflection. I could be completely wrong. They could be desperately in love. I don't think so because he looks utterly miserable. And he may well stick it all out for the children. You know, that's another bone of contention, isn't it? Um, thoughts, opinions, left, right and centre. Do you think they have separated? Do you think that there is a divorce negotiation going on at the moment? One, If there is, one can only imagine the type of demands coming from a certain quarter. Um, do you think MI6 are seriously looking into who's funding the sugars. Do you think there's a change in the wind? Do you sense something is up? I will be fascinated and absolutely rooted to the comments on this one because not only have you life experience, the culmination of your life experience, guys, runs into the hundreds possibly over thousands of years and older than the monarchy itself. Look forward to seeing you below. Thank you very much for listening and thank you for all your very kind comments last night.